In the late 1950s, both radio and television were testing the waters, and Congress did not like that. Coming up, we talk about a law that's been around for decades and the oversight that gave LPFM a 19-year free pass. FCC 101, BG Bradley. Since the close of the LPFM filing window, REC has received quite a few questions about the public notice posting requirement. This can be found in Section 73.3580 of the FCC rules. There is a reference to this rule in 73801, making it applicable to LPFM. The rule requires that broadcast applicants for certain application types must inform the public about their application filing so the public has an opportunity to comment about whether the grant of the application would or would not be in the public interest. This rule is based on Section 311A1 of the Communications Act, which requires that when an application is filed for an instrument of authorization in the broadcasting service, the applicant shall give notice of such filing in the principal area which is served or will be served by the station. Section 309 of the Act describes exceptions to the public notice requirement. When the exceptions are taken into consideration, The types of applications requiring public notice include applications for original construction permits, applications for major modifications of facilities, applications for an assignment of license or some transfer of control applications, applications for a renewal of license, and for full service stations only, applications for a change in the community of license. The original law was enacted in 1960 as part of a larger legislation that was intended to make broadcasters more accountable to the communities that they serve. This legislation was as a direct result of two significant things that took place in the 1950s. In radio, record companies were paying radio stations and disc jockeys to play and promote their latest releases without any notification to the public that the programming was sponsored by the record company. This is also known as payola. In television, quiz show producers such as Jack Berry and Dan Enright were producing television quiz shows such as 21 and Tic Tac Doe for primetime television for outrageously high, at the time, cash prizes, which made for good ratings and revenues. However, it would be discovered that the shows were staged and that the contestants were provided with the answers before the production. As a result of the 1960 law, Broadcasters were required to disclose payments or other consideration made for the broadcasting of certain matter. This became known as sponsorship identification. It prohibited deceptive practices in contests of intellectual knowledge, skill, or chance. It authorized the FCC to impose forfeitures in the broadcast service, and it required pre-grant procedures on certain applications, thus the public notice requirement. When the public notice rule was first created in the early 1960s, the primary method of giving notice was publication in the newspaper. The rules had specific requirements on the number of times the ads had to run. They would normally be found in the legal notices. In 2000, when the LPFM service was first created, the FCC wanted to keep the service simple for these applicants as they were new entrants and less likely to be experienced in broadcasting. To keep the service simple, they excluded LPFM from certain types of reporting, including maintaining a public file and doing quarterly issues lists and the filing of ownership reports. The original rules also did not require LPFM stations to notify the FCC when the station goes silent, although that was changed in 2020 in MB Docket 19-193. The original rules also did not require LPFM stations to issue public notices when certain applications were filed. No one blinked an eye on this until 2019. At that time, licenses were getting ready to be renewed, and someone made an inquiry to the Media Bureau staff asking if LPFM stations had to make announcements over the air regarding renewals like the full service stations did. 
At first, staff advised those inquiring about the public notices that LPFM stations were specifically exempt from the requirement. The Media Bureau even posted on the FCC website that LPFM was exempt from the requirement. On May 17, 2019, the Media Bureau had a change of opinion. REC, along with other advocates, were informed by the chief of the audio division that despite an absence of a specific rule, LPFM stations were required to make the public notice announcements for renewals and eventually clarified that public notices would also be required for other application types. Later in 2019, as a part of former chairman Ajit Pai's media modernization initiative, the FCC proposed to eliminate the requirement to use newspapers for broadcast public notices and replace it with the use of online sources. In the same proceeding, MB Docket 17-264, the FCC amended 73.801 of the rules to make the public notice rule 73.3580 also apply to LPFM stations. So let's take a look at today's public notice rule. There are two types of public notices, over the air and online. Over the air public notices are used when there's already a station that is operational. Online public notices are normally used when there is no operational station. This includes applications for new construction permits, as well as qualifying applications filed by stations that are currently silent. Some commercial applications will require both over-the-air and online public notices. Again, the types of applications where a public notice is required are applications for original construction permits, applications for major modifications of facilities, applications for an assignment of license, applications for a renewal of license, and for full-service stations only, applications for a change in the community of license. Other application types, such as minor modifications, silent notifications, requests for special temporary authority, and administrative updates do not require a public notice. Over the air and online public notices must commence within five days after the application is considered accepted for filing. To know when an application is accepted for filing, you need to check the daily applications public notice that is released by the FCC. There are links to the public notice in the FCC Daily Digest, as well as at REC's FCC.today website. Applicants for new full-service non-commercial educational FM and low-power FM stations that have been identified as mutually exclusive will be considered on public notice on the day that the applicant is declared a tentative selectee. These will not necessarily appear in the FCC daily applications public notice. It is important to know that in the FCC's LMS system, even after an application is accepted for filing, it will still show as pending. This functionality is different than the predecessor filing system, CDBS. REC systems such as FCCdata.org and the filing window tracking tool read the daily public notices that are released and will, in most cases, show the application accepted for filing. The only way that you can see accepted for filing status in LMS is to go to the LMS public view and use the public notice search. The method for delivering the public notice will depend on the type of notice, station type, and operating status as shown on this chart. For online, that includes applications for new stations and major modifications for commercial stations. And for over the air, that includes major modifications for non-commercial stations, including LPFM, renewal applications, assignment applications for non-commercial stations, including LPFM, and full-service non-commercial stations changing community of license. Once again, that excludes LPFM. Commercial assignment of license applications and community of license changes must be done both online and over the air. When a required over-the-air announcement cannot be made because the station is silent, then the public notice must be done online. When a public notice announcement can be done over the air, there must be at least six announcements aired over a four-week period with no more than two airing per week and no more than once in a day. Announcements can only be made between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. local time. The FCC requires the over-the-air public notice to be with the following scripting. On January 21, 2024, Podunk Radio, licensee of WDEF, 
94.7, Riverton, Maryland, filed an application with the Federal Communications Commission for a broadcast license renewal. Members of the public wishing to view this application or obtain information about how to file comments and petitions on the applications can visit publicfiles.fcc.gov and search in WDEF's public file. Since LPFM stations do not have a public file, the script is slightly different. On January 21, 2024, Riverton Radio Project Association, licensee of WRECLP, Riverton, Maryland, filed an application with the Federal Communications Commission for a broadcast license renewal. Members of the public wishing to view this application or obtain information about how to file comments and petitions on the applications can visit www.fcc.gov slash station search and search in the list of WRECLP's filed applications. For online public notice announcements, the FCC only allows the announcements on certain types of websites, including the station's website, the station's parent organization's website, or a publicly accessible website geared towards a local area, such as a local government website, local community bulletin board website, or a state broadcaster's association website. Posting public notice messages only on social media sites such as Facebook, LinkedIn, X, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok will not satisfy the public notice requirements. If your station does not have a website, you should get one, not only to meet the public notice requirements, but to make your station more visible to the public. On your station's website, you will need to put a link or tab labeled FCC Applications and then have the public notice message on a separate page that that link would land on. You must keep the FCC Applications link on the website at all times, even if there's no current public notice messages. The required text for an online public notice for an existing station is as shown here. Applicants for a proposed but not yet authorized station will have a slightly different public notice text. Also, as a reminder, if you link to your LMS application and you file an amendment to that application, you will need to update the link in the online public notice message. Online public notices must run for 30 consecutive days. However, if you need to pay a publicly accessible website for the listing, you are allowed to run it for at least 24 hours, once per week, Monday through Friday, for four consecutive weeks. The final requirement is the certification of public notice. This is a document that simply states that the public notice process was followed. This document must include the dates and air times of over-the-air public notice announcements or for online public notices, the dates in which the public notice was posted and the URL for where the public notice was posted. This document does not need to be submitted to the FCC. Full service stations will need to post it in their public file. LPFM stations only need to maintain this document in their station records. The document must be prepared within seven days following the last announcement or within seven days of the last time the online public notice was posted. Broadcast stations are licensed in the public interest, convenience, and necessity. As Spectrum is a finite resource, broadcasters have a responsibility to meet the public interest. This expectation was solidified by Congress in 1960 and is still an expectation to this day. You can find more information about the public notice process at these resources. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And on behalf of REC Networks, we wish you the best of luck with your station. I'm Michelle Bradley, SBE Certified Broadcast Technologist. Thank you for watching.